Mike Bako joins us now from New York. He's sports editor at thedailynational.com. And Mike, what a difference a few weeks makes. Uh, we were just talking about the Olympics just a few weeks ago, and we were talking about, oh, geez, COVID. Uh, now we're talking about Paralympics, and we saw this decision today about uh, Belarus and Russia, a little bit of controversy leading into this. Give us a preview of uh, the Winter Paralympics. Yeah, well, c certainly off to a very political start, uh, and it kind of ended on a political uh, end with the Russian skater and some of the, the figure skating testing results, that becoming a uh, big news, this one of, of much more importance and, and world importance. But again, that's shining a spotlight, but let's shine a spotlight on what's actually going to happen, celebrating these para-athletes, celebrating a lot of the progress that China has made in terms of building up their infrastructure of facilities, promoting it internally. China has 85 million people that are living with disabilities, and they've gone to great lengths over the past decade or so of really building out the infrastructure, building out the participation, building trainers and, and training trainers to help out people that are looking to get into this sport. So it's really been a concerted effort over the last decade plus to ramp up for these games. Talk to us a little bit about some of the obstacles of hosting an event like this, because obviously just putting on the Olympics is just a Herculean task. But these have additional nuances as well, don't they? I mean, that the country has to address. And how did they address them? Well, they've been doing it over the last decade or so, certainly before they even had the Olympics, but with an eye towards hosting these games and, and increasing participation. So much of what they've been doing from a winter sports perspective has been geared towards the Winter Olympics, building out the infrastructure and the popularity of winter sports, but also from a Power Olympic uh, a sport perspective. They built 10,000 uh, sports facilities to help out with disabled athletes. They've trained over 100,000 trainers to help out uh, with these participants. They've sent almost 400,000 fitness equipment and at-home uh, training mechanisms to people with, with disabilities. They've raised the, uh, the amount of people participating in power sports to almost a quarter of all disabled people. About a decade ago, that was in the single digits. So this has been something from an infrastructure standpoint, from a country standpoint, from an athletic federation standpoint, that they've been focusing on for well over a decade. We saw in uh, the recent report there, uh, Dwayne Kale in the wheelchair uh, in the torch relay, um, the para games, uh, the 2022 Asian para games coming to China as well. Uh, it's obviously becoming more of a push. What is China mm -hmm. doing to make some of its cities more accessible for the disabled? Well, they're spending a lot of money to do it. So again, going back to building out the facilities, but also making transportation easier for the athletes to be able to get there. In a lot of cities, they've built an infrastructure of, of different vehicles that will take people to their specific uh, training locations. They've built out this app system where a special car or van will bring you and your equipment to the facilities. So they've really poured a lot of money into it. When they make it a priority, you could see what a country and a nation can do to encourage people to participate, like I was saying earlier, going from low single digits to now close to a quarter of all disabled people that are participating in some sort of sport. That is great strides that they've been able to do, and you may actually see it in the results. Certainly, there's a cause and effect to go from 2014 in Sochi only having 10 participants to this year almost having 100. So the proof is in the pudding. Uh, it'll be interesting to see if the results follow, but certainly the participation has followed. Yeah, and they're incredible athletes, aren't they? Mike Bako, uh, thank you so much. Always a pleasure chatting with you. Always good to be with you, Mike.